generally go over the the uh, you know, store. No, just just basically, so we we have an idea of where what we can what we can cut out and get the page count. Well, I don't know. I think uh, what Buell is what what D'Angelo is talking about first is that hey, we got too much uh, yeah. from pr from production aspect. Yeah. And I think that's what he's worried about. Uh, Buell's big aspect was that if we're going to do anything with uh, uh, Perkins, that if we can contain it inside as opposed to outside. Out outside. Great. Uh, so anyway, let's, well, basically then we, we're going to tell them we're going to keep the, uh, right. the opening teaser, which is going to be four to five pages, maybe okay. five pages. It's going to be just basically the run with the, uh, with Perkins, the old, the old bidding well, thing, where Perkins bids up the bid, and then he slaps it or whatever. Lobo tells him, and then he pulls the gun, and he's, okay. So we got that. Basically. <laughs> That's basically what we are. We're a couple of television writers that write comedy, that like to write comedy. The, the thing we're going to end with Perkins going over the buffet table, yeah. the horse rears, yeah. his, he's, he's tethered to the main pole structure. The tent comes down. The tent comes as okay, the old. Okay, so and he, and he said that was fine. Yeah. Basically, we put ideas together to entertain, sometimes to inform. Basically, uh, can, we get the, can, we, can we get away with anything other than the fire? It's just a few flickering flames to begin with. It's just ignited. It just Once we put the ideas together, we sit down and we we examine the ideas and, and we redo the ideas and we turn them into scenes and bits and pieces and hopefully stories. And, and be, be caught between wanting to make a profit on one hand and wanting to, uh, you know, and, and getting pushed on the other. Mm -hmm. and, and suddenly you've got, you've got naturally funny scenes. Plus you've got Perkins constantly with the horse. Right. And that's going to be the thing. If we remove the text and we have, the, and we have the, the deposed monarch just dealing directly with Lobo, it ain't funny. It ain't funny. Well, there's we no don't. There's no, well, there's there's no, no jeopardy there's for There's nothing Lobo. pushing. Yeah. There's nothing pushing. Because the, the guy's script. crooked. Lobo's crooked. You need somebody in there that's going to be on Lobo's back to straighten him out. To push him. Yeah. What, what we're trying to do today is clean up a story that we have already presented to our producer, which uh, he has felt uh, is too much. So he called us and told us to. Uh, Go back over it, try to tighten it up here and there, and and uh, if if we have to, come up with a new storyline. With other ways or other clever means and devices, where the information is brought to Lobo, uh, you can still get your harem belly dancer stuff upstairs in the suite. Well, okay, yeah, we uh, I I agree. We can lose it. I'd rather not lose it. As long as we can get the basic structure we have set up, yeah. you know, we can bring it in at fifty-four. Okay, and that's we just fine. have to convince him of that. Think Look, that the whole thing I'm is going to come down to if he let us write the damn first draft, and, and then we'll, we'll trim up the second. As long as we can get. All right. So what basically what we've got here is what we need to do is. Uh, We've got generally the character. Yeah, I just have Jonathan Ripped, investigator in first class. Jonathan what? Is that his Ripped. name? Ripped. Okay. That's what that, we just settled on, wasn't it? Well, that was his name. I thought it was the name of the title of the show. I didn't know that was yeah, his last name. The name of the, of the performer. Oh, I didn't know that. You were there. I mean, we were I, both I, there. I, I'm always in a day. We're in the process of selling a hour action comedy to ABC Television Network, hopefully. See, that's Universal well, has shown interest in it, enough interest that they've... Uh, committed us to a contract and uh, are going to go into ABC with us. At this point, we're uh, we're getting it in into our minds what we're going to say and and how we're going to sell this idea. Hypothetical. I just want a story, uh, like the opening with Superman, where the three guys are put on the plastic plate. You do a story in the world, and and your story right. in the world sets up your story, story for your series. Series. Hypothetical. Those three guys in the plate who are zipped away from yeah. Krypton. There's three criminals brought to trial, or two criminals, or one criminal yeah. brought to trial well, good, in this right? tear zone, right? For trying to get through the tear, right? Possibly. I'm just running a hypothetical story. They have him blocked off. He's a criminal. He's going to be done away with. Somehow, he finds another tear. Or, or well, let me just remember something. He okay. finds another tear. He goes through the tear. I don't want the crime to be him trying to go through no, the no, tear. No, no, saying, no, 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 no. I'm saying. Well, what I'm, saying. No, no, no. What I'm saying is he committed a crime, and. Bob and I did not start out together. Uh, I started out as a film writer. I wasn't into television. And after three years of realizing, of learning the ropes and realizing that film writing was very difficult and quite and difficult to sell and to come up with scripts, I switched over to television because it's easier to sell a script for television than it is to sell a script for, for a motion picture. So I, I adjusted myself 
from a financial standpoint, starving or surviving, and started writing television scripts. Go back, and you can still get your Advent laser game, and people don't know what's going on. And you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just worried about setting the structure in the pilot so that when the audience hopefully starts tuning in from week to week, they know a basic foundation of what the hell is going on. Well, yeah, I, I agree. It's very important. You know, we've talked about this before in terms of just a basic. You know, who cares if, if New York City blows up? But if, if a lady and, a, and her two kids that you knew throughout the whole thing is, is going to be killed or hurt or murdered, then you care about these people. You know what I mean? Well, there's got to be about, more. There's got to be the. the I think. I well, think we have. Just, I, I, I mean, that's just you're just talking words to me. Well, no, what, what I'm saying. Is, what, I, uh, what I'm saying is one person as opposed to the And I just told Bill that instead of uh, burning the barn down, we yeah. would have like a, a stacks of hay that are, would have bales of hay on the side of the barn that the guys light. We still need the gas. I mean, yeah, but I'm saying we won't light the barn. We'll just yeah. light the uh, uh, stacks of hay, and we'll have the horse. We'll cut to the horse inside, and he'll see smoke smoldering underneath through the wood cracks, and he'll just intelligently yeah. pick himself up and casually walk out the other door. And you can still see Perkins driving away with the horse. I don't think we have to have it illuminated to such an effect where it's. No, uh, I don't even, is it necessary? Did we did we set it up? There was well, I don't think there's any one set pattern of how we, we work we together. We uh, generally, we sit in a room, and once we know what the story is, and we've broken it down to beats of how that story will evolve, we start putting it to We start putting dialogue to it. Story opens at the spa. Near the stable paddock area, large open air tents are erected for conducting a horse auction. The president and international array of buyers all dressed in black tie. That's see, what we could do is we could. Actually, this first thing would. Uh, see, we could show. What we Basically, could what we try to do is get a natural flow of the dialogue and hope that it will dramatize a story, so the story. Uh, and we try to do it well, without as much extraneous yeah. material and dialogue as possible. And we will sit down and we'll write what we call like a foundation of dialogue. And then we'll go back and we'll either save some of it or throw it all out and just use that as, an, as the foundation and just, just keep trying to write down and get the best dialogue and the best script that we can. Some days it's good, some days it's bad. What you want to do is Jack Ray picks up a can of paint, he eats and he asks the waiter and he says, what is it? And the guy says, it's calamari. And he eats and he finds out calamari squid and he almost gets sick or something like that. Or It's a long way to go. He can say, let's do it. Everybody knows get snail. Uh, escargot. Okay. Okay. Escar you know, that's delicious. What is it? Escargot. He's never heard of that snail. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you can have him, you know, low comes over. What are you doing? Paul and I work here at my place a lot. It's right next to the beach. Uh, generally, the environment's better, and and they're not really pushing us that hard to come in. We work on Universal Lot. Uh, the lot itself is a is is like a small city. There's everything there. You can find whatever you want. I work in a a trailer, which hangs suspended over the Los Angeles River. The trailer shakes constantly. My my office, my desk chair continually shakes. I feel like I'm riding in the back seat of a Model A. I, I'm not comfortable at that place. I don't, I don't particularly like uh, uh, the working conditions there. Um, I can't believe I can't find a better office than that. What I, what I see the opening as is, you know, is, is uh, the camera panning through, maybe as, as the point one on, the, on, on page one has it. Mm -hmm. Camera panning through little pools of people with the with the waiter walking through with a tray of champagne. Mm -hmm. That way we establish um, we establish the place, you know, very easily. We we follow the waiter and maybe should we have should I we think have she come Lobo? up to Perkins and Lobo and he says, What do you got there? Well we got escargot, we got all the I like to put myself in the position of an audience, if I can at times. I haven't seen it. And uh, are we saying enough? Are we saying too much? And I'm constantly analyzing that, maybe too much so. Uh, that's one of the differences between Paul and myself. Paul goes fast. You know, he jumps in and he just, he just mows along. They say he's, uh, I hate to give him a long name to explain who yeah, he is. Yeah. It's not just a horse perkin, it's top pursed. Yeah, he's he's, they say he's better. He's better than they, you know. If we give him a like secretary, a secretary or sea biscuit or something, this or you know, it's like he's never. He's the he's, he's the greatest brown winner, and he's you know. Yeah, I like to do it in like one thing that says it all. Most of your dramatic writers write by themselves. Most of your comedy writers write in teams. 
because the attitude is two people can bounce off and come up with a joke, a trigger, a word, some, I could say a word, a phrase, but one word in that phrase will trigger Bob to come up with a joke and vice versa. Okay, popping him in his mouth. These are better than corn chips and onion dip. Hey, what do you call them? Hey, these are better than corn chips and onion dip. Yeah. Onion dip. What do you call it? I go through a process of my own where I, when I, when I started writing, um, I had many, and I still do, I had many sleepless nights working up to a project, and I'm much calmer about a script now. As far as the basic process, we'll be working with producer, um, and we'll feel out what that producer is looking for. If there's an executive producer, it's producer's job to feel out what he's looking for or she's looking for. Um, generally, you'll go in, you'll have a series of IDs if you're an outside writer, even an inside writer, someone who's on staff, uh, will go into their producer, they'll pitch an idea or ideas, and hopefully one of that idea, one of the ideas will connect with the producer. Uh, he or she will send you to story. Uh, the story runs about 15 pages. You'll turn that in, the producer will look it over, uh, decide what it needs. Uh, you'll have another meeting producer. Uh, he'll then send you to first draft if he thinks it's all right. Generally speaking, almost all contracts have a cutoff clause at story where they don't have to send you to first draft. They can pay you the, for an hour, I think it's two thousand dollars, but they can pay you that money and cut you off and give it to one of their own people or give it to somebody else to do the teleplay. But you'll turn in your story, the producer will send you the first draft. Once you're sent the first draft, you're home free as far as the money goes. You're paid for the entire package right there. People. King Ali Dusim has asked that the auction commences. Uh, you'll do a first draft in an hour. Ours are running probably about 56 pages. Um, and this is the full film teleplay. I think we, now we should uh, do like a Somehow like a Japanese winks his eye or no, something. No, do something more uh, obvious. You can't just... Okay. Uh, just when a guy raises his hand, Japanese... He just, he just has a, you know, he just... Uh, yeah, oh, he, he like waves, program, his, waves his program. Waves his program. Okay. Uh, Japanese... Uh, You'll turn that in. You're given two weeks to do something like that. Uh, you're given one week to do the story. You'll turn that in, the producer will look it over, uh, he'll get together with perhaps uh, another story editor if you're an outside writer or other people on the show. And uh, they'll work up their notes, uh, see what they think works, what doesn't work, and then they'll get back to you, you have another meeting, you go to a second draft, do a rewrite of that. Uh, and if you're on staff, you'll continue to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it all the way up to the, the shooting of the show. Four. I have four. Do I hear five? Perkins said, did you hear that? Some, some idiot just bid four million dollars for that horse. Five. Perkins. Did, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Now I think you should say what idiot would bid for what idiot would bid four million dollars for that nag. For that. And then Moses is the one standing <laughs> next to Perkins looks around. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anybody here want to outbid Big Joe Wabash? Looks around. I didn't think so. Okay. Auctioneer outbid. sold to Big Joe Wabash for ten million dollars. Bangs his gavel. Anybody here want to outbid Big Joe Wabash? Well, see, how does he know he's Big Joe Wabash? Oh, he, he just said that. that. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, I stand corrected. Any sold to Mr. Big Joe Wabash? Big Joe lets out, out a hoop and throws his hat into the air. Yeah. Wahoo! Nice horse, easy now. Whoa, boy. This is for 10 million bucks. You sure do have a lot of flies hanging around. <laughs> yeah, you want to do that? Yeah. We have written for, the, we were staff and wrote for the Jeffersons. We have written for All in the Family. We have written for Good Times. We have written for a new show on a different format from Norman Lear called The Baxters, which is a new type of talk and succession show. That's in half hours. In hours, we've done Eight is Enough, The Incredible Hulk, The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, and like I said, I did that Quincy in my spare time. To collapse. Causing the tent to collapse. Now, I will see what I say. You should do Lobo. He looks up. Okay, on Lobo. Lobo. Well, that's got to be intercut then. Yeah, you can't okay. just throw that in there. 
I guess the most satisfying thing about this is knowing that it's leading some. It's it, everything that you're doing is advancing to somewhere hopefully higher. The the doors are open or or, or are beginning to open for us to get to a higher level. But that you get with paying your dues and learning the biz and learning the ropes and whatever and make meeting people within the business who can hopefully help you and, and look at your work and say, yeah, I want them to do a project for me and stuff like that. You know, I don't even know if we need that. Well, I think so. Why? Well, uh, that gives some of the flavor of the Arab and, you know, when they come in and everything. And well, what, what does it get us? It, it's a strange thing. I, I'm, on, I'm on a show that I would not be watching as a television viewer. Um, I'm also in a situation where I'm doing very little writing. The waiting game is terrible. It's, it's you're constantly waiting for something to happen. And when it does happen, you never have enough time. Your producer will let you sit and sit and sit for weeks on end, and then suddenly you've got three days to do a script. I, f I feel confident in saying the scripts Paul and I have done are gallant efforts and are well thought out stories and scripts. Uh, we've, we take pride in that, that we won't do a schlock piece of work. Um, I guess I, what I'm doing is testifying that we've had very little to do with the overall series, and uh, it's, it's almost an embarrassment. Do we name those two guys? No, I don't think we have to give them names. I just think, you know, frickin' frack is good enough. Bodyguard one, bodyguard, bodyguard two. two. They're not going to have any lines of dialogue. Right? I have gone through, in the past five years that I've been down here, I've gone through so many transitions and changes and wanting to leave and not wanting to leave and wanting to get another job and not wanting to get another job. And it, and it really is all tied through to whether or not I have a, a good day or a bad day in writing. It's what it really comes down to. The, the bad days I want to go to Oregon and teach in a community college and the good days I want to be a producer and, and own part of this, uh, this community. Says, you know, now, do you getting wanna, my free drink. Getting my free drink. Getting my free drink. Free drink and get the horse. Forget the free drink and get the horse. Don't you got something? You know, forget the ass. Just get right to it. Forget the free drink and get and get the horse. Perkins turns around and is greeted by an onslaught of dashing at Perkins. Um, a, a stampede. Yes. Perkins turns around and is and greeted by a stampede. Greeted by a stampede of okay. guests clamoring to the bar. Yeah. Clamoring to the bar. He crawls out between their and he crawls out between their legs and crawls off and crawls away. That's all we gotta say. See this is what I envision. We set it up in just these half pages, bing, 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 bing. And then this long lugubrious no, I agree. I, I just don't think we quite have local.